Hello everyone, I am Anthropomantic Fiend, and I do horror-related things on the internet. So, it's been a good while since I've done one of these book recommendation type videos, or just basically showing off my book collection, but I had sort of alluded to that I had very specific sections for all my Tim Burton stuff and for all my vampire stuff, and I did the Tim Burton video, so I thought I might as well do the vampire video, just because there's so much of it might as well. A lot of it's fairly standard, but you might find some other cool stuff as well. So to start off, I'm going to try to get away the huge stack of Anne Rice books I have sitting over here because my librarian is very nice but doesn't realize that I literally have no shelf space for books anymore. So she gave me her entire Anne Rice collection, which was very sweet of her. I just have nowhere to put it, so it's all in the stack over here. Of course, you have to have an interview with the vampire. What do I say about this book? It's by Anne Rice. It's friggin' Interview with the Vampire. I can't tell you anything about this. If you don't know what this is, and you're watching this video, why not? It's freaking Interview with the Vampire. I don't have a copy of the Vampire Lestat, which pisses me off to no end. I literally cannot find anyone anywhere. I'm probably just gonna end up ordering it online at some point. I can't find a physical copy in the physical stores. We've got Queen of the Damned with the movie cover on it. Tale of the Body Thief, Memnock the Devil. Merrick, which, like most of these Vampire Chronicle books, because I'm a bad fan of pretty much everything, I haven't read them yet, but this one I think collides with the Mayfair Witches series, so that'll be cool. Even though I definitely did not like the Mayfair Witches as much as Interview with the Vampire, it was still pretty well written. I just like vampires better, and you would think that all the really crazy, disturbing, erotic stuff would mostly happen in the vampire books, but no, I, I probably have to disagree with that. It's mostly in the Mayfair Witches books. Those books are messed up, but I love them. But anyway, Merrick. I believe Blackwood Farm also does that, uh, combining them. The new tales of the vampires with Pandora which I also have not read yet. I've read Vittorio the Vampire. I think that was actually the first Anne Rice book I ever read because the copy of Interview with the Vampire was not in my library at the time, so I read that instead. That was awesome because I was actually reading about like the Renaissance in Italy at the time in my history class, so it all lined up quite nicely, and that was very enjoyable, but I need a copy of that, and I need to read I need to read Interview with the Vampire again, and I need to read go back and read all of the Vampire Chronicles books because I love vampires. I believe that's all the Anne Rice vampires I have. So now on to all the other stuff that I've got. So starting off a little bit weirder, uh, we have my one of my prized possessions, which is this copy of Draculama Volume One. It's literally a Count Dracula llama who feeds on people who cause drama. Yeah, that's the whole premise of this comic, and it just takes that and runs with it, and it's hilarious. And uh, the best part is I got this at a Comic-Con, so I got it signed by the author. I'm very, very happy about that. But just to give you a taste of the kind of stuff they do in this, there's Draculama in his Francis Ford Coppola style armor. There he is with his three alpaca brides. Here he is, looming behind two people arguing over whether Star Wars or Star Trek is better, because drama. So yeah, this is hilarious. I highly recommend it. In the same sort of silly vampire vein, I have The Ink Drinker. This is a very weird little kid's book, and the back of the book just says, What's a boy to do when he hates to read and he's stuck in his father's bookstore over vacation? Spy on customers, that's what. The adventure begins when the boy spots a strange-looking customer shuffling through the shelves. This man is not browsing. He's sucking up the ink of every printed word with a straw. Scared but curious, the boy follows the weird pale man to the cemetery, where the boy ends up developing a taste for something much more filling than blood. It's creepy in a strange way. It's also absolutely ridiculous. It's been a long time since I've read this one, but I'll definitely read it again. So, The Ink Drinker. Really weird, but 
highly enjoyable. V is for Vampire by David J. Skull, who's written everything on vampires in existence. He literally does the commentary on uh, the copy of the Bela Lugosi Dracula that I have, and he's... I've got, like, at least two or three books in this stack that are by Skull, and they're all very well-researched and well-written. I need his other books, too. But, yeah, this is a nice little dictionary of all things vampires in alphabetical order. I think there's, like, a bibliography and a filmography in the back as well. There's a giant Dracula section in the Ds, naturally. There's all kinds of little weird things that aren't necessarily, uh, lots of stuff that isn't necessarily 100% vampires, but is vampire adjacent. Like, there's an entry on here on Arthur Conan Doyle, and he's got a few examples of things that Doyle wrote pertaining to vampires, including Holmes investigating a phony vampire in The Adventure of the Sussex Vampire, The Parasite, which is a psychic vampire, and, you know, crossover stuffs like the Holmes Dracula file. Elvira, because she's sort of adjacent to Vampyra, is in here. There's a section on sort of, like, parasitical fetuses that drain their parents. Uh, there's a section on Freud. Yuck. Judy Garland, who is supposedly, some people think she's a vampire. It's a section on homosexuality as it pertains to vampirism, which is always fascinating to read about. The Incubus. It, the Terror Beyond Space. It also includes, you know, blood-drinking alien-type creatures. Lamia, Lilith, Karl Marx, because he says capital is dead labor, that vampire life only lives by sucking living labor and lives the more, the more labor it sucks. So, apparently there's also a section on class warfare. So yeah, anything and everything pertaining to vampires that Skull could get his claws on is in this book. So, this is a very nice little comprehensive book. I highly, highly recommend it. Vampire. The Terrifying Lost Journal. The Terrifying Lost Journal of Dr. Cornelius Van Helsing. Not Abraham. Cornelius. So this is the journal of Abraham's brother as he is trying to investigate what has happened to Van Helsing following the events of the original Dracula, and it is beautiful. There's all kinds of little tidbits about actual vampire folklore. It's got little pop-ups and things, and just look at all that stuff. Isn't that wonderful? It's got a little section of Hungarian phrases, like how to say I can't speak Hungarian well. Do you speak English? Is there someone here who can speak English? Help! Look out! I don't understand. Leave me alone. Don't touch me, and I'll call the police. This definitely keeps in the sort of journal format of the original Dracula book, while also having all this supplementary stuff around it. It just is very true to the spirit of the book. It's great if you want to learn stuff about vampires, have some fun, and try to solve what's... what the heck's going on. So yeah, vampire. Very good. Highly recommended. And now we're back to Skull again with Hollywood Gothic. As it says at the bottom, the tangled web of Dracula from novel to stage to screen. So this follows, like it says, the story of Dracula from its precursors to its inception to how it did at the time to the first stage adaptations to the first movie adaptations, then TV, like into the 50s with monster culture and stuff. There's a whole chapter on the Spanish version of Dracula and just a nice, some very nice appendices of Dracula on stage, Dracula on screen, a selected bibliography. It's like everything Skull writes on the topic of vampires and Dracula, and pretty much horror and classic horror in general, it's very comprehensive and very well written. I love Skull's work. If you like vampires at all, check out, just find the list of books he's written, and check to see if they're about vampires and if they are by them, especially this one. Now we've got an int uh, informational book on Dracula that 
is not written by Skull. This is In Search of Dracula. Okay, the low battery thing just came up on my phone. This is the history of Dracula and vampires completely revised. So, this one has got stuff about Bram Stoker and the way he created his count. Also, a bunch of great stuff about Vlad the Impaler. Lots of history about Vlad himself, but also a lot of history of old world vampire folklore, and then a much smaller section on adaptations. So this goes much more into the history and background of the original story with a little bit of stuff about the adaptations. Uh, so get this if you want to go more in depth with that. Get that Hollywood Gothic book if you want to go more in depth with the adaptation type stuff, but get both if you just freaking love Dracula and vampires. This one's not the best, but I still like it, mostly because it has Christopher Lee on the cover. It's just called Dracula, but it's not Dracula. It's Dracula everything you always wanted to know about the man, the myth, and the movies. This one's got some nice pictures in it, some Varney the Vampire for you. I kind of want to read that, but I also kind of don't because I hear it's very not great writing, but that's also kind of why I want to write it. If I'm recalling correctly, there are some inaccuracies, some goofs in this book, so it's not the greatest recommend, but if you want a nice big hardback book with pretty pictures of vampires in it, this is for you. Now we get into the actual Dracula story. So I'll start with the not original, with the adaptations. So we've got one of my favorites, which is this lovely little graphic novel adaptation of Dracula. It follows the original book very, very closely, with the exception that it kind of tries to shoehorn in the whole thing about the Count being Vlad the Impaler, even though he's not really. Stoker just kind of nicked his name. But I can hardly complain because just look at some of this artwork. Come on. Look at that right there. It's just very stylized, very nice to look at. I love it so much. Here's another very, very nice drawing. If you want a graphic novel adaptation of Dracula, go with this. This is really nice stays fairly close to the book, and it's got its own art style in there as well. It's not the book, but it's close enough, and it's a really fun read. And then we've got what I read first, which is the classic starts version of Dracula. This I got for my birthday some years and years ago. I don't remember when exactly, but I love this little book so much. It definitely tones down some of the horror stuff. It sort of suggests that, for example, when the vampire women are with Jonathan and then Dracula comes in, that the thing in the bag is some kind of animal and not a baby. I mean, I think both are equally horrible, but they definitely try to tone down some of the more brutal, horrific stuff from the original in this adaptation, but it also simplifies most of the basic bits of the original enough that it helped me comprehend the original when I actually sat down and read this. I got this and the original for my birthday, so I have this to thank for initiating me into the original, original Dracula story. And then of course, with my birthday money, I went and bought the classic starts version of Frankenstein, Jekyll and Hyde, and Phantom of the Opera, and read those. I have since read Dracula and Jekyll and Hyde multiple times, even though Phantom is one of my favorite stories of all time, I haven't actually read the original Phantom book all the way through. I'm sorry, I still need to do that, and I promise you I will. If you're already an older horror fan, which I expect you are, you don't really need this, but it's nice to compare, and it's good if you're getting into horror and you're younger. These are all really solid simplified adaptations of the original books. Because I'm an obsessive, I have three different copies of Dracula. I've got this little volume, which is what I think, because my dad and me read the book together the first time around, I think this was the copy he read, but now I have it. It's got some little bits of analysis and an introduction thrown in, and some very Vlad suggesting front cover art, which, what the heck guys, Vlad isn't in this book, he never was. But it's whatever. 
this is just a nice little well transportable copy of Dracula. And then we're getting more into my favorite stuff. This is the first copy I read. This is an edition that's got just all of these very beautiful woodcut illustrations inside. Genuine, just beautiful woodcuts of stuff from Dracula. I've also got one of these for Frankenstein in there somewhere, but it's very pretty. If I can find one of those illustrations, I will show it to you. This one's not my favorite, but it's good. Here's Jonathan shaving. So that should give you a sense of what kind of art is in this thing. Just a solid little edition of Dracula. And then we've now come to my always heavy Bride and Joy, the new annotated Dracula with a foreword and notes by Leslie S. Klinger and a nice little recommendation by Stephen King on the back. And it's got a foreword by Neil Gaiman. Uh, I will never forget his introduction to this because it's talking about how he first read Bram Stoker's Dracula when he was about seven. I think I was maybe about seven when I first read it. Maybe I was older, like 10. I was probably eight or nine when I first read Dracula, but anyway, Dracula scared him so much that he stopped reading and just went to the end to make sure that Dracula died and then got really confused when he watched Son of Dracula, and it actually just turned out to be the Count, even though I think that could still be the Count's son, in some manner of speaking. But yeah, Neil Gaiman intro, all kinds of wonderful comprehensive notes and pictures from all over the place, from other vampire books and media, from movie adaptations, and it's this has got... Really, if you like Dracula, this is everything you need to know. And I think this has got uh, Dracula's guest and a bunch of things. I'll just read the little bullet points on the back. It just says it's got 1,500 notes that provide information on virtually every aspect of the novel, hundreds of illustrations from Victorian maps to movie posters, peculiar historical oddities such as the science of blood transfusion, a novel approach that for the first time treats Dracula as a historical document, New revelations about the cast of characters, Jonathan Harker, Van Helsing, Lucy Westenra, and of course the Count himself, and a classic introduction by Neil Gaiman. This is really awesome. All of this is, but this. This. So that's everything. If you like vampires, I highly recommend all of the books I've shown you, even the very silly ones. Vampires and stuff. Thank you for watching my video. Bye.